It was a Tuesday before the Friday we were due to play Scotland in the Six Nations Championships. We were at Franklin's Gardens and we went into a routine training session and we, we went into a thing called scrummaging, it's basically where two packs of big guys would fight it out uh, for the starting place on the Friday night. Um, I hit the scrum, the scrum collapsed and sort of in the blink of an arm, my life changed from, from being a young fit sportsman to next being sort of paralysed from the neck down. Slam dunk, are you ready to make me? I was very fortunate to have Tony Spreadbury uh, there that day, who um, is a famous referee and he, he's an ex-paramedic, so he, he resuscitated me. Then I woke up during the, in the ambulance and uh, I was struggling to breathe. And then the next thing I know, I, was, I woke up and stand out of the hospital. He left me paralysed from the neck down and able to breathe out the only ventilator. So obviously changed my life forever and um, yeah, changed a lot of people in my life and their lives forever as well. Obviously the procedures for engaging as scrums has changed somewhat in the years since, but there's still a long way to go, do you think? in terms of making scrums safer? The laws have changed, so it just used to be engaged um, and you, you could hit the scrum without putting your arm in front of you and touching the opposition. Um, yeah. But now you have to touch and actually make a bind. Scrum is still an integral part of the game and, and is still um, really, really, really important within the game, I think majority of the time when when your scrum's going forward the side obviously goes forward and, and if you've got the the ascendancy in the scrum then you normally um you normally win the game well i, th I think it would have been very easy for, for you to never want to watch rugby again or pe at least people could understand that but i love it that you still love the game just as much now as you ever have yeah, rugby uh, is still a massive part of my life. I absolutely love the game. Um, it's not the same, obviously, without the crowds and things like that. I, I always say that rugby gives me more now than what it did before my accident. And what I mean by that is the support and, and the friendships that I still make through rugby is uh, unbelievable. We still have that sort of camaraderie and friendships made, but also the banter around um, which, which is very, very important. And um, rugby's uh, yeah, a crucial part of my life still. In terms of your actual, your story, so you're riding high on that, mm -hmm. on that boat, you're going, you know, you're going full pelt towards full-fledged uh, professional status, um, playing for the first team, obviously playing with England under 21s and stuff like that. And then obviously life changes instantly without any, any foresight to it happening or anything like that. Can you, can you explain what that, what how that happened? Pom Basel have been a rugby player has been tough and getting injured and I hadn't realised the true severity of my injury. Um, and then obviously I was lying in intensive care and I was on a lot of medication. I was sort of in and out of consciousness. And then um, I went up to the went up to the ward, um, high dependency ward at Stone Manville, and I. I looked at the people in wheelchairs around me and I thought, God, look at that poor guy, not actually realising it. hadn't really dawned on me that, um, that actually I was probably a lot worse than them. Yeah, it, it was tough. It was really tough. But um, I think rugby and Leicester Tigers to be in good stead to, to crack on with my life for it and make the most of it and just say, look, this has happened um, and just be at peace with my injury. Yeah, I'm in a I'm, I'm in a wheelchair and I'm paralysed and let down, but I can achieve great things. And you know, the the centre and the foundation really inspire me on a daily basis. There's people um, who are in a lot worse off situation than myself, and and that's nothing to do with the level of injury or other paralysis. It, it's to do with um, the mental state of people and and. Uh, yeah, you, I think you just got to make the most of the situation and crack on with your life, really. Has the accident changed the way that you personally think of disability? I, d I didn't know anybody disabled before my accident. I didn't know anybody in a wheelchair, so I think I have a I have an understanding. I'm treated still the same old Matt. I'm still the same old person. I wouldn't have it any other way. And I think that's mm. massively important to um, let yourself not be defined by your wheelchair and your disability. My my partner and, and her boys, they 
they very much treat me like the same on Matt and I'm very much the brunt of their jokes and, and same with my care team. I don't want to be treated differently and I think that's really, really important to, to have that. Um, my, my home is in hospital, it's a home. Um, mm. I think that's really, really important and I think sometimes people have got a chip on their shoulder and feel sorry for themselves but... Um, I don't think I don't think I have that. Sometimes I do, just because I want a bit of sympathy. It's <laughs> gone, but, uh, but I, I very, very rarely get it. So is it, if, there's, um, if there's the last chocolate bar really left, important. is it? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> how, how can you tell with my physique? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>